Hello, this is Sophia Cho, and today we're going to read The BFG by Roald Dahl, illustrated by Quentin Blake. The characters in this book are humans, the Queen of England, Mary, the Queen's maid, Mr. Tibbs, the palace butler, the head of the army, the head of the air force, and of course, Sophie, an orphan. Giants, the flesh lump eater, the bone cruncher, the man hugger, the child chewer, the meat dripper, the gizzard gulper, the meat masher, the blood butler, the butcher boy, and of course, the BFG, the witching hour. Sophie couldn't sleep, a brilliant moonbeam, sliding through a gap in the curtains, was shining right on her pillow, onto her pillow. The other children in the dormitory had been asleep for hours. Sophie closed her eyes and lay quite still. She tried ever very hard to doze off. It was no good. The moonbeam was like a silver blade, slicing through the room onto her face. The house was absolutely silent. No voices came up from downstairs. There were no footsteps on the floor above either. The window behind the curtain was wide open. Nobody was walking on the pavement outside. No cars went by on the street, but the teeniest sound could be heard anywhere. Sophie had never known such a silence. Perhaps, she told herself, this was what they called the witching hour. The witching hour, Sophia once whispered to her, was a, very, was a special moment in the middle of the night. Never child had met, and every girl was in deep sleep. Deep, deep sleep, and all the dark things came out from hiding and had to roll to themselves. The moon was brighter than ever on Sophie's pillow. She decided to get out of bed and close the gap in the curtains. You got punished if you were caught out of bed. If you were caught out of bed after the lights out, even if you said you had to go to the lavatory, that was not accepted as an excuse, and they punished you just the same. But there was no one about now, so if you were sure of that, she reached out for glasses that lay on the chair beside her bed. They had steel rims and very thick lenses. She could hardly say a thing without them. She put them on and slipped out of bed and tiptoed over to the window. When she reached the curtains, Sophie hesitated. She longed to duck underneath them and lean out of the window to see what the world would look like now that the witching hour was at hand. She listened again. Everywhere, it was deathly still. The longing to look out became so strong she couldn't resist it. Quickly, she ducked under the curtains and leaned out of the window. The silvery moonlight, the village street she knew so well, seemed com- seemed completely different. The houses looked bent and crooked, like houses in a fairy tale. Everything was pale and ghostly white and milky white. Across the road, she could see Mrs. Lance's shop, where he bought buttons and wool and bits of elastic. It didn't look real. There was something dim and misty about that, too. Sophie allowed her eyes to travel further and further down the street. Suddenly, she froze. There was something coming up the street on the opposite side. It was something black, something tall and black, something very tall and very black and very thin.